Let's begin a new series of problems involving uh, entropy and thermodynamic uh, applications. Most of these will be open system problems. Refrigerant 22 in a refrigeration system enters one side of a counterflow heat exchanger at 12 bar and 28 degrees C. The refrigerant exits at 12 bar 20 degrees C. A separate stream of R22 enters the other side of the heat exchanger as saturated vapor at 2 bar and exits as superheated vapor at 2 bar. The mass flow rates of the two streams are equal. Stray heat transfer from the heat exchanger to its surroundings and kinetic and potential energy effects are all negligible. Determine the entropy production in the heat exchanger in kilojoules per kilogram per kilogram of refrigerant flowing. What gives rise to the entropy production in this application? Well, let's start with the schematic of the system. We have a heat exchanger and um, R22 is flowing through both sides. And we're gonna take the uh, system as the entire heat exchanger. So I'm drawing the system boundary about, around both of the R22 <coughs> flow rates. <coughs> Let's see what we know about each of the four states. State one has a temperature of 28 degrees C and a pressure of 12 bar. Now in the uh, R22 saturation table at 12 bar, I find the saturation temperature is 30.25 degrees C. This temperature is less than that. Therefore, state one is a subcooled liquid. Now state two is at 20 degrees C and at the same pressure as uh, state one, it's at 12 bar. And because it's even cooler than state one, it also must be a subcooled liquid. Now state three is at two bar and it was given as a saturated vapor so those two properties fully define state three. Mm -hmm. State four is at the same pressure as state three. There's no pressure drop across the heat exchanger, but it's just simply described as being superheated. So we don't have a fully defined state four at this point. Let's look at a TS diagram of these states. State one and state two are both on this 12 bar constant pressure line. Both are subcooled liquids. Uh, state one is a subcooled liquid at 28 degrees C, and state two is a subcooled liquid at 20 degrees C. Now, states three and four are on this two bar constant pressure line, state three being a saturated vapor, so it's sitting right on the saturated vapor line of the vapor dome. State four is on the two bar line, but it's somewhere out in the superheat region. We don't know anything more about it at this point. We're going to model this as an open system operating in steady state. Uh, we're going to ignore any changes in kinetic uh, and potential energies that might take place. We'll call them zero. There is insignificant heat transfer between the system, which encompasses our entire heat exchanger, and the surroundings, so Q dot is zero. And the heat exchanger has no mechanism for doing work, so W dot is also zero. We want to find the uh, rate of entropy production uh, per unit mass of flow rate <clears throat> through the heat exchanger. Now, our continuity equation is um, that m.1 is equal to m.2. That's for one side of the heat exchanger. But it's also equal to m.3 um, being equal to m.4, which is on the other side of the heat exchanger. We were told that the mass flow rate through both sides of the heat exchanger is the same. And we're just going to call it M dot. We can begin by writing uh, an energy balance for this. Uh, we know dE dt is zero because it's operating at steady state. That's equal to Q dot minus W dot plus the mass flow rate. And remember, there's only one mass flow rate, but it applies to all four states. So that would be uh, the mass flow rate times H1 minus H2 plus H3 minus H4. And since there's no heat transfer or uh, work done during this process, we have simply that zero is equal to H1 minus H2 plus H3 minus H4. Well, let's start finding these values in the table. 
we can go to the R22 saturation table at 28 degrees C. And state one is a subcooled liquid, so H1 is simply going to be H sub F at the same temperature, which is 28 degrees C. And we get that H1 is 79.05 kilojoules per kilogram. We can do the same thing for the entropy. The entropy at state one is just the entropy of a saturated liquid at the same temperature. And so S sub one, um, we get a table value of 0.2936 kilojoules per kilogram K. Let's repeat this for C2. We can go to the R22 saturation table, but this time at 20 degrees C. And again, this is a subcooled liquid. So H2 is H sub F at 20 degrees C. And S2 is S sub F at 20 degrees C. And we'll grab the uh, two table values uh, for those properties. Repeat this for state three. But uh, now we have uh, R22 in the saturation table. And it's uh, fully defined as having a pressure of two bar and being a saturated vapor. So H3 is just H sub G at two bar, and S3 is S sub G at two bar, and those values can be taken directly from the table. Now state four is a little different. State four is not fully defined. All we know about state four is its pressure, um, it's two bar, but we don't know anything else about it. It's, it's superheated, but that doesn't help. But if we go back and look at our energy balance, we can see that the only unknown in our energy balance is H4. So we can solve the energy balance for H4. Then we get H4 is just H1 minus H2 plus H3. Well, we have all of these values from uh, our table lookups. And we can calculate that H4 is 249.81 kilojoules per kilogram. So now we can go into the superheat table at two bar and look for this enthalpy value. So I <clears throat> reproduced a little part of the subtable here. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is taken at two bar. And I'm looking for the enthalpy value of <clears throat> 249.81. And I come really close to finding it right here at <clears throat> minus 10 degrees C. But it's not quite. We could have just snagged values <clears throat> for this row, but I'm going to interpolate and get a slightly more accurate answer. So if you've watched me solve these problems before, you know I like to calculate an interpolation factor uh, independently, and I call it F. And it just basically tells me how far between these two rows I am. And since I'm so close to the first row, I would expect my interpolation factor to be a very small number. <clears throat> but it's given as just H4 minus the enthalpy at minus 10 degrees C divided by the enthalpy at minus 5 degrees C minus the enthalpy at minus 10 degrees C. And we have all of those values. And certainly, I do calculate the interpolation factor as a small number. <clears throat> it's 0 0.0369. So now I can calculate the entropy at state 4. It's just the entropy at minus 10 degrees C plus the interpolation factor times the entropy at minus 5 degrees C minus the entropy at minus 10 degrees C. And we have all those values from our table. And I calculate that the entropy at state 4 is 1.0081 kilojoules per kilogram K. Now we can write a general uh, entropy rate balance. We know that delta S is, uh, can be written as the mass flow rate <clears throat> times the change in specific entropy. And we know that's equal to the uh, sum of uh, the entropy transferred into the system during the process plus the rate of entropy production during the process. <clears throat> so let's rearrange this and divide by the mass flow rate. And I get this is the term I'm looking for. It's the rate of entropy production per unit mass flow rate. Well, that's just the change in specific entropy, S2 minus S1, minus the summation of Q dot over M dot divided by temperature. But Q dot is zero, so this whole term disappears. 
And we're left with a general form of the entropy rate balance is sigma dot over m dot is just the change in the specific um, entropy value. So it's S2 minus S1. <clears throat> now for our particular situation where we've got two flow rates, I'm going to have to expand on this concept. So sigma dot over m dot is going to be uh, S2 minus S1, which is part of the system, but also it's plus S4 minus S3, which is the other part of the system. I have all of these entropy values now, so I can put them in, but I'm going to solve them in pairs. So sigma dot over m dot is equal to this term, which relates to the hot side of the heat exchanger, plus this term, which relates to the cold side of the heat exchanger. So on the hot side, I get a um, um, entropy production of minus 0 0.03290 kilojoules per kilogram K. On the cold side, I get an entropy production of plus 0 0.0390 kilojoules per kilogram K. So we can see that the hot side gets cold, uh, gets cooled. And so it has a change of entropy that's uh, negative. But the cold side gets heated, so it has an entropy change that is positive. But of course, we're looking for the uh, entropy production of the system. So I have to add those terms together and I get that sigma dot divided by m dot is 0 0.0061 kilojoules per kilogram K. And that is a positive value. And of course, uh, in order for the heat exchanger process to take place, entropy must be produced. So sure enough, the entropy of the system increases and we were asked for the source of the entropy uh, increase. Well, remember that all spontaneous processes and heat transfer from a, a hotter source to a cooler source is, is a spontaneous process. So that's the irreversibility in this system. So the entropy increase is most likely the, uh, the irreversible and spontaneous heat transfer from a hotter to a colder substance.